So over the last few months, Sony has really been refining their box speakers and giving them a much more neutral and balanced sound signature. But JBL also just refined and upgraded their new party box speakers. So today we are going to compare the Sony XV500 to the JBL Party Box 120 and we're going to see which small box speaker is right for you. Regarding pricing, both of these speakers have a retail price of $400. Not bad for small portable box speakers, but I do expect both of these speakers to eventually go on sale for $350 on a regular basis. Nonetheless, if you want to pick either of these two speakers up, there will be a link down below, or you can always press on the YouTube shopping button. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat, link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming, and and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat and look out for more designs coming soon. And also, please remember to hit that like button and let's get subscribed. So first, let's talk about the design of these two speakers. Regarding size and weight, these two speakers are very similar to one another and they both weigh in at a little less than 25 pounds. And portability wise, these two speakers are the same. They're both relatively easy enough to take on the go with you and they both have built-in carrying handles. But the center-mounted carrying handle on the PortyBox 120 is a little more comfortable than the carrying handle on the XV500, but it's not a big deal. And when it comes comes to durability, these two speakers are the same again. They both have mostly plastic bodies which can get scratched very easily, and they both have thin metal grills on the front which can get dented very easily as well. But both of these speakers are IPX4 rated, so a little bit of water isn't going to hurt either of these two speakers. But the control panels on these speakers are fairly different. The 120 has a large dial for your volume, and a large dial for your light feature, and there are some DJ buttons up top, whereas the XV500 is using capacitive buttons that light up. Personally, I'm indifferent about these buttons, but something that I do like about the 120 over the XV500 is that it has an LED in the porch panel, which makes it easier to plug in your microphone in a darker room. But another thing the 120 has over the XV500 is that it has a top hat mount on the bottom. So if you want, you can put the speaker on a speaker stand mount if you want. However, the major design difference between these two speakers is going to be their light features. Now, the light feature on the XV500 is decent, but the light feature on the 120 is just larger and a lot more dynamic. Obviously, you shouldn't make your speaker decision solely on the light feature, but you have to admit the 120s is a lot more impressive than the XV500. However, if you do decide to use the light feature on either of these two speakers, that is going to take its toll on the the battery life. Now regarding battery life, the XV500 has an advertised battery life of 25 hours, whereas the PortyBox 120 has an advertised battery life of 12 hours. However, this advertised battery life of 25 hours on the XV500 is with it playing at 36% volume, which is good for like ambiance, with the light feature turned off, but with the mega bass feature turned on, which is good. And if you were to use this speaker with this light feature turned on, then it's going to have an advertised battery life of 12 hours. Whereas with the Party Box 120, its battery life of 12 hours is with it playing at 20% volume, which is on par with 36% volume on the XV500, but that's with the light feature and the bass boost feature turned off. But real world use with the 120 playing at 65% volume, which I feel is a decent volume for when you're with friends. With the light feature turned on and with the bass boost feature set to deep, it's good for around 7 hours of playback time. Whereas with the XV500, with it playing at 80% volume, with the light feature turned on and with the mega bass feature turned on, is good for about 8 hours of playback time. And the reason why the XV500 has to play at 80% volume versus the Party Box, which is playing at 65% volume, is because with the XV500, it doesn't get as loud as the Party Box 120 when it's running off of its internal battery. At a max volume, the XV500 just doesn't get as loud as the Party Box 120 unless you have it plugged in. But this is something that we'll dive deeper in later. 
So overall, I do feel that the Pretty Box 120 has the better battery life here than the XV500 because you get much better performance out of it while it's running off of its internal battery. However, another thing the 120 has over the XV500 is that it has swappable batteries. And this swappable battery is great for two reasons. First off, if you get multiple batteries, then you can just swap them out and keep the party going if you're in an area where you can't easily plug in with the 120. Or if you get to a point where the battery in your 120 degrades and it can no longer hold a charge, instead of having to replace the whole speaker, you could just buy a new battery. But with battery out of the way, let's talk about connectivity and ports. Now, both of these speakers can be connected to two devices at the same time, so you and a friend can both be DJing. Latency is not an issue for either of these two speakers, so you can use them to watch videos with on your phone. And when it comes to audio codecs, the Podibox has support for SBC and AAC, or as the Sony has support for SBC, AAC, and LDAC. Just keep in mind that if you do want to take advantage of LDAC, you do have to be an Android user because iPhones top out at AAC. But then there are the ports on these speakers. Like I mentioned earlier, the Party Box's port panel on the back is illuminated, which I feel is a nice touch. But more importantly, both of these speakers still have a USB-A port so that you can either plug in and charge your own devices, or you can plug in a USB stick and play music off of it. Now, I think it's great and all that both of these speakers still have a USB-A port, but personally, I still wish that both of these speakers had USB-C ports because most phones these days come included with USB-C to USB-C charging cables. But both of these speakers still have your standard 3.5mm audio jack, so you can use them with a wired connection. But the Party Box also has an audio out jack, so you can always daisy chain any other speaker to the speaker, regardless of size or brand, and get them to play in sync, whereas the Sony just doesn't. But more importantly, both of these speakers have a dual quarter inch inputs so they can either plug in two microphones for karaoke and or you can plug in a guitar. And with the 120, you can go in and adjust the bass and treble of your microphone from JBL's app. Whereas with the XV500, you can't change the sound of your microphone, but you can add an echo to it if you want through Sony's app or there's a button on the speaker itself, or you can change the key of your music music and you can make your music sound brighter and speed it up a little or you can make it sound deeper and slow it down a little. Personally, I never use the key change feature on Sony speakers but it is there if you want it. Personally, I do feel that being able to adjust the sound of your microphone is more important on the JBL than on the Sony. But something the Party Box does have over the Sony or Who the is DJ ready to jump? Top, which can be a lot of fun depending on your host. Overall, both of these speakers are good options for karaoke because they can both run to microphones. And this is actually a new feature for the Party Box 120 because with the 110, you can only properly run one microphone, whereas with the Sony speakers, you could use them with two microphones for a while now. But personally, I still wish that both of these speakers had more than two quarter inch inputs. And I also wish that both of these speakers had XLR inputs so they could use them with a mixer if you want. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. Regarding speaker setup, both of these speakers have a dual format firing woofers and a dual format firing tweeters. However, the placements of these tweeters are a little different. The 120 has them on the top and the XV500 has them in the center. But more importantly, the 120 has a rear firing exhaust port, whereas the XV500 has a frontward firing exhaust port. And with both of these speakers, you can always go into their app and adjust their EQ to your liking. But I like using the 120 with its stock EQ and with its bass boost set to deep. And I like using the XV500 with its stock EQ and with its mega bass feature turned on. And this is how we're also going to be using these speakers while in the sound test. And they're going to be playing at 87% volume and we're going to be using these speakers while they're unplugged and plugged in as well. Because when you use either of these two speakers while they're plugged in, you're going to get a performance boost out of them.
So first, I think we need to adjust max volume performance on these two speakers. Like I mentioned earlier, the XV500 doesn't get super loud when it's running off of its internal battery when compared to the Portibox 120. So with the XV500, this is a speaker that you're going to have to use at a higher volume on a regular basis. However, if you were to use the XV500 while it's plugged in, you are going to get a performance boost out of it. It's going to have more bass and it's going to get much louder and when the speaker is plugged in that's when the speaker starts to perform just as you'd expect but when the party box 120 is plugged in you also get a performance boost out of it and when it's plugged in the 120 still gets a little louder than the xv500 when they're both running at max volume but when it comes to overall sound quality first off the party box does have a slightly broader sound signature than the sony but when it comes to instrument separation these two speakers are very similar to one another but what's really different here is the bass the party box has more physicality in its base than the XV500. Also, since its exhaust port shoots out the back, you can easily amplify its base by simply placing it up against the wall. Whereas with the XV500, this speaker has a more neutral base to it because its exhaust port shoots out the front. Overall, both of these two speakers sound good, but performance-wise, the Portibox 120 easily outperforms the Sony XV500 because when the XV500 is running off of its internal battery, it's slightly held back. Whereas with the Portibox 120, you get great performance out of it whether you're using it with its built-in battery or while it's plugged in. But finally, let's talk about pairing these speakers up with other speakers. Now, the Portibox 120 is using AuraCast, and if you have a two Portibox 120, then you can wisely pair them up and get them to play in left and right stereo mode or you can pair the 120 up to another AuraCast speaker like the Portibox 320 and get them to play in sync. But unfortunately, you cannot wirelessly connect the Partybox 120 to any of JBL's older Partybox speakers, like either the 310, Encore 110, or 710, and you cannot connect your 120 to any of JBL's smaller Partyboost speakers. Now, JBL's app does mention that you can connect Partyboost speakers to AuraCast speakers, but it seems that you can only connect AuraCast speakers like the Clip 5 Go 4 or Extreme 4. Unfortunately, neither the 120 or 320 show up on this list, so hopefully JVL will add the 120 and 320 to this list, but for right now, you can't connect the 120 or 320 to your party boost speakers. But like I mentioned earlier, the 120 does have an audio out jack, so you can always daisy chain any other speaker to this speaker, regardless of size or brand, and get them to play in sync. So at least there's that, but in general, not being able to connect your 120 to any of JBL's older speakers does suck. But then there's the XV500, which is using Sony's Party Connect. So if you have two of the exact same speakers, again, you can get them to play in left and right stereo mode, or you can pair your XV500 to other Party Connect speakers, like either the XV900, XV800, XP700, or to another XV500, or to an XP500, and you can pair up to 100 speakers together and get them to play in sync. But the cool thing about Sony's Party Connect is that you can also pair your larger box speakers to any of Sony's smaller speakers that are also using Party Connect. 
Now, even though Sony's Party Connect is very accommodating and it does get the job done, sometimes it can be a bit of a hassle. Sometimes it takes a while for all of your speakers to get connected. Sometimes all of your speakers don't get paired up on the first try, so you are going to have to go through the pairing process multiple times, and sometimes skipping does happen. Now, this doesn't happen all of the time, but this is just a heads up as to what to expect. But with all that being said, both the Sony XV500 and JBL PortiBox 120 are great small box speakers to consider. However, if I had to choose one, the PortiBox 120 is easily the winner here. From a performance standpoint, the PortiBox 120 gets as loud as you'd expect it to get when it's running off of its internal battery, whereas the XV500 can leave you wanting more. And when it's plugged in, the 120 is going to get a noticeable performance boost as well. But also, the swappable batteries on the 120 are a huge deal because either you can get multiple batteries and keep the party going or you can get a new one when your battery can no longer hold a charge. Also, the 120 has that audio out jack making it more versatile. And finally, there's the light feature on the 120. The light feature on the 120 is just a lot more dynamic than the one on the XV500. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.